show you how to code a simple Voronoi diagram using GLSL and ShaderToy. That's the result which we are coding during this tutorial. And at first I wanted to shortly present the idea of a Voronoi diagram. Basically, um, whenever you wanted to calculate the Voronoi diagram, you need an input of points where we calculate our diagram for. Um, I have put four points into the shader at the moment, but we can adjust it. And they are somehow animated, so we, we can see some animations inside of the shader. But you can pass any points you want into um, the shader. And then the idea is that the Voronoi diagram shows different areas where each of uh, the areas which is shown exactly contains all pixels which are the nearest to that point here in the center. So for this um, input we have four points, these four points here which are moving slightly because I've animated them and when we take this green area for example we can see that every pixel in this green area is the nearest to that point and this point and this point and this point are more far away than this white point. And that's the basic idea of a Voronoi diagram and I don't want to bother you anymore with some theory but just wanted to go into coding some shaders. I've prepared an empty shader toy project here and we just wanted to start with um, a color which we define as zero in the beginning. So let's say vec3 color is equal to vec3 zero. And now we also wanted to define our points which we pass into the shader. Um, we also need the length of the the array which we define here, which we define here. Let's say points length equal to let's take five this time and then we define an array of vec2 um, we can simply do that by typing in the variable name followed by these brackets and including the number of elements which we wanted to have for the array and now we say vec2 five elements and now we can define our elements which we wanted to put into that array. Um, for now, just keep it simple and static. I wanted to have, I don't know, I will just type in some values which are coming into my mind. Doesn't matter too much at the moment. Um, we can take that one, Ooh, duplicate, go on. Just these values so we have some different values here let's go for 0 0.1 and here we can go for 0 0.2 here we do 0 0.7 and that's it for our points array so basically we have to find we have to find our points which we um, which we wanted to calculate the Voronoi diagram for and the next step is to just define a minimum distance we wanted to calculate. Um, for now we are just assume that our minimum distance is very high. So I set it to 1000 but it's just an, a very high value. We can also set it to 100 or 1 million, doesn't matter. So it just has to be very high. And now we can just go over every point in our points array, we do it with a um, for loop. We say int i equal to zero. We want to go from i equal to zero up to um, point length. And we want to increment i every time we go through this loop. All right. Now we just wanted to calculate the distance from our current point to the UV coordinates we already have over here, which basically tells us which pixel we are currently rendering. 
and we wanted to calculate the distance between the point and the UV coordinates and if that is lower than our d min value then we wanted to save that point and set d min to the new minimum distance so basically we need an if statement here um, we check the length of our points array at the index i minus our uv coordinates which is giving us a distance between the uv coordinates and the point we are currently looking at and if that is smaller than our d min value then we know that this point is the closest to the pixel we are currently looking at and we also wanted to save that index so i need an integer value calling uh, point point equal to zero for now and whenever we found a point which is the closest to our uv coordinates we wanted to set the point equal to i which is our index and we also wanted to update our d min which is equal to length from points array at index i minus uv and that's basically it so when we have gone through this for loop we know which is our closest point to the uv coordinates and what we need to do now is just assigning a random color um, in um, so which is depending on the point we um, determined and for that we can write a new function we tell uh, we call this function rent color we wanted to get a vec3 back from that function which is giving us a color that's a rent color and we wanted to pass an integer value into that function basically we wanted to pass uh, the index of our point to that function and it should return a semi-random color we need to do some different steps um, at first we wanted to get the sign from our number but we convert it to a vector 3 because we wanted to have three components every component for one of the color channels for rgb and we also add one to the number because um, here we we also have uh, it it could happen that the the index of our point which is the closest to our uv coordinates is zero and because we don't want it to have a zero here in that um, sign function we add one to the number and then because we don't want it to have r g b values um, equal we multiply that by some random values i'll just type in something here because we don't want it to have rgb equal but we want to have something different um let's say we do 1.97 here and i don't know 20 point whatever and that giving us um, a color which is um looking random to us or three values which are looking kind of random to us and because a color value should be between 0 and 1 we also want to put that into the fract function which is giving us the decimal values of our um, of our number here and now we can simply return that and here we have our random color function which is pretty cool because now over here we can just say okay um, our frac color, which is the color which we which we see here in the in the shader, our frac color is equal to rent color from our point index. And here we go. Oh come on, what's wrong here? Oh, I guess I have one bracket. Okay, what's going on here? Let me see. Oh yeah, okay. Here there is uh, this, we don't need this. And here we go, that's a simple bar noise cells. So we also wanted to display the points which we are passing into the shader. And to do this, we need to first round our UV coordinates and the coordinates of our points we are passing into the shader. And to do that, we are 
defining a new vec2 um, uv rounded. And to round values, you can basically use the floor function, which is um, taking the integer part of um, any value. We pass our uv coordinates multiplied by 100 into that function. So our uv coordinates are between 0 and 1. And when we multiply by 100, um, it's between 0 and 100. Um, and then we divide by 100 again. So that floor function only takes the integer part of our um, value. So then we have an integer value between 0 and 100. And then we divide by 100 again to get a value between 0 and 1 again, which is rounded for two decimals because we multiplied by 100 and divided by 100 afterwards. So that rounds our UV coordinates to two decimals. And we also wanted to do that for our point. Point rounded. And here we wanted to pass our point. OK. And now we can just check if our UV coordinates, which we previously rounded, are equal to our point coordinates. And if that is the case, we can assign the color vec we have um, defined over here, we can simply assign it a value of 1. And over here, where we just define the, the output color of our pixel, we can add this cal value. And now when we execute, we can see that these are the points which we are um, passing into the shader, which is pretty cool. So we have generated a Voronoi diagram and we are also displaying the points which we pass into the shader. And now the next thing I wanted to add just to make a little bit more cool looking is to animate these points a little bit. Um, you, can co you can go crazy with that one, so you can animate whatever you want. But basically I wanted to show you something with a sign function. Um, we can say that we wanted to add um, 0 0.2 multiplied by the sign function from iTime. iTime is um, passed into the shader. It's a variable which is um, generated by shader toy and passed into the shader. You have access to it inside of the shader and it's basically containing a float value which is um, going higher and higher when whenever we um, we executing the shader. So I guess you can see that value here. You see that it's basically going up and up and up. And um, then we take the sign from that. So we have a value between minus one and one. And we multiply that by 0 0.2, which is giving us some kind of animation. You can see that here. It's moving right now, which is pretty cool. And yeah, I just wanted to um, demonstrate that you can do that with other values as well. We can also use the um, cosine function. We um, put our time into that one as well. So you see, we have another point which is animated. And let's say we want to also animate the x coordinate of that point. Um, wanted to animate it a little bit slower. So I just put a slower value in here and multiply by sine of i time again. And you see that, I don't know, which one is it? Let's make it a little bit faster just to make sure it's really moving. Come on. Oh yeah, okay. It's that one over here we have also animated. And um, yeah, that's basically it. So um, we can for sure also add some more values um, to or some more points to our array. Um, when you wanted to have more, we um, can just add entries. Um, let's say 0 0.1 and 0 0.7. We also need to adjust our points length. And let's see what went wrong. Oh, okay, yeah. We also need to adjust the length of our array here. And here we go, just added another point. And 
you can adjust it um, however you want. You can add more pawns, you can add some more randomness to it, you can also um, change the random color function a little bit and something I also wanted to show to you is um, that we can play around with this D min. Um, so basically the, the D min is um, containing the distance between our closest point to our current UV coordinates and it's pretty interesting to just um, show that here we can say the min and now you see um, the D min visualized so these brighter parts over here um, have a very a large um, D min value so it, the distance between that point and this point over here is very um, large and as darker it gets um, the closer it gets to the point obviously so um, that's pretty cool we we have that over here it's for free so it's it's there and we can use it to um, give our Voronoi cells um, a certain kind of shading we can for example just subtract the d min value from our color and you can see that it's um, getting brighter and brighter when we are going um, closer to the center of our Voronoi cells and the the edges or here um, the yeah the border of the cells are a little bit darker we can also make it a little bit more extreme when we multiply it by two. Oh come on it should be a float yeah so you can just experiment with that one just wanted to show that the d min the um, minimum distance is also available here and it can give you some pretty cool results when you're just playing around a little bit with it and that's basically it so um, I will just save it here in Shader Toy. Voronoi Shaded. Let's say simple Voronoi because it's very, very simple Voronoi diagram. Um, I can make that public and I will go Voronoi. Okay, I can also give it a description. Come on. So I can just save it and now I will. Um, also add the link to the shader to the description in YouTube so you have um, access to it and can play around with it. Hope you learned something today. Hope you have a lot of fun with creating your own Voronoi diagrams because they are looking pretty cool I guess and you can go crazy with um, these kind of things. And if you like it you can subscribe my channel, you can um, give the video a like and just comment onto the video in case you have some questions.